What's up? Welcome back to the State of the Arc podcast. My name is Mike. My name is Kason. We're going to try to finish Metal Gear Solid today. Let's jump into it. We may or may not, but let's do it. So, Master is Liquid Snake. Yeah, awesome moment. Uh, they lock him in the room. It's bulletproof glass. He can't shoot his way out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, they put gas into the room, and it's like, oh no, and then Otacon hacks the door and lets you out. <laughs> of course, yeah. And that's uh, the deus ex machina. It yes. happens a couple times. I actually thought it was kind of funny the way he re- revealed he was a hacker. I can't remember exactly what the dialogue was, but it was like, it, it, Snake asks, you're a hacker? He's like, yeah, like... Of course cause, I'm cause, a hacker. Because he's a computer geek. Of course, all computer geeks are yes. hackers, too. Yes. Kind yes, of a yes. thing. But, you know, I'll buy it, whatever. Yeah, why not? Sure, he's a hacker and a nuclear physicist. Um, I actually forgot to bring this up. I had a whole note that I missed last time. Ooh where Miller contacts Snake and tells him that Fox died was in the injection that that Naomi gave him earlier and that he's infected with it too. That's right, yes. And then Campbell informs Snake that he had arrested Naomi. She's under interrogation. Yes, but then she calls us secretly from like wherever she is. She was able to secretly call us. This was all during the time we were going to warm the key. I totally skipped this. I did too, (laughs) yes. I forgot. I did have this Yeah. Yeah, she Naomi calls, calls us from like a secret place and she's like whispering, and, hey Snake, I need to talk to you. And we're like, what's going on, Naomi? And she's yeah. like, stop it. I just have a few things to tell you, right? Yeah. And um, but and I can't remember. She does tell us some stuff, but for the most part, all of a sudden she doesn't seem like as much of a bad guy. Yes. And that's like kind of the gist what I got there. But Campbell has her arrested again, <laughs> I guess. And then uh, we're like, hey, we want to talk to her. And Campbell's like, nope. You're not allowed to talk to her again. Mm-hmm. And Campbell is very adamant that we, are, we cannot talk to Naomi Hunter. Yeah. And the, a couple of things that she mentioned that were important was that her brother, who she had been mentioning before, yes, to care was, of her, was Frank Yeager, who is Gray Fox. Who is Gray Fox, who is <laughs> Cyborg Ninja. Who is Cyborg Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> and that big boss was her benefactor. Yes, when she lost her parents yeah. um, a long time ago in, in uh, Rhodesia, um, yeah, he, Gray Fox, kind of like helped her out and like showed yep. her the ropes and kind of was her big brother for a while. Yep, so she joined Foxhound yeah. to kill Snake. She, she's she been wanting vengeance on Snake because Snake killed Big Boss and because Snake killed Gray Fox before. Yes. Um, so in the end, that she, she also reveals that it wasn't her call to use Fox Die on this operation. Mm. Even though she administered it, it wasn't her call to do that. Yeah. That came from above. Above. Um, and then she gets arrested again, like you're saying. She was she about to tell us something yes. really important, and then, and then she gets she arrested. arrested. Okay, so Liquid reveals here later that Snake was being used by the Pentagon to spread the Fox Dive virus. I think this is... Yeah. Is this when you're facing off against I think my end? next note here is the face-off. I, I can't I'm remember if there's anything in between. I'm sure that's where this is coming up. So basically, it's just you go fight Metal Gear, and you're facing off against Liquid in Metal Gear. Yeah. Um, and we have some some heart to heart. Talks. Yeah, and he he has. I mean, this is a lot of dialogue where Liquid. Yeah. This is like classic villain monologuing, telling you the story <laughs> that you just watched. Yep. 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 yep, yep exactly. But, but you know, it's cool. It's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. They say Snake is here for one reason: to spread Fox Die. Yep. And that he, he coming in contact with Anderson, who was decoy octopus. Actually, oh, but this was a big one that Naomi Hunter had altered Fox Die, had altered the injection, mm. and then we ask how, and they say, we don't know. They don't know exactly what Naomi Hunter did to alter it. So mm. that's a, there's like a question mark there. Okay. Um, he also begins to allude to this fact that he and Snake are not the biological sons necessarily Big Boss, but actually yeah. clones of Big Boss. Clones, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there were eight fetus baby fetuses that were yes. cloned and then he says six of them were disposed of disposed of and then two were allowed to remain yes. but in order to um i don't know exactly why this is for whatever reason in order for one of them to be really strong they had to keep alive the other one that was really weak yeah i don't know so, why so <laughs> yeah there's the dominant genes but in order to make the dominant gene one you had to make a recessive gene one that's a philosophical thing the opposition and all things yes. kind of thing where it's like 
you know, there's always the shadow of everything. I'm like, okay, but I don't get why they physically yeah. had to make <laughs> the recessive dude and then raise him up and when they disposed Unless of all the other ones. some kind of part of the experiment to just like test it must have been. how the genes would turn out. Like to make sure they got it. it right? I don't know. Or something? Yeah. But the point is, Liquid was told that he was given all the recessive genes of Big Boss and he's the yes. inferior yes. clone. And that Solid Snake was given all of the dominant genes. And that's what you took everything from me. Yes. Like I should and have been you. You know what he says about himself because of that? He says that he is garbage. Oh, is said. that right? Yeah, that's you think what I'm thinking? Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> Xenogears again. Another <laughs> Xenogears reference despite these games having come out. They may, this one may have come out before it. I don't that know. That is crazy. But yeah, actually. Snake is our twin. And Zeno, oh wait, actually that's kind of giving away some Yeah, Xenogears. Well, that would be a Xenogears spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, I'll delete what I just said. But there's some funny Xenogears stuff going on with the whole that he's trash. He feels like he's garbage. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so Liquid wants revenge on Big Boss for this because... Apparently, like, you know, Big Boss was involved in this, and Big Boss told him, you're the inferior one, Solid Snake's the superior one. So yeah. he wants revenge on Big Boss, and his revenge on Big Boss, since he's dead already, because Snake took that away from him too, you even took my revenge on our father away from me. Yes. So yep, now yep, yep. my new way of getting revenge on him is to surpass him. So I'm going yes. to build Outer Heaven again, and I'm going to, like, actually complete what he couldn't do. To show him, you know, yes. kind of thing, and he's also so he himself. will he will overcome the recessive nature of his genes, yes. his genetic code. Um, yeah, we're on the last episode, so we can say this now. Okay, but it sounds really funny coming from Liquid, who is so beastly that he can shoot down. F-16s with a high D. With a high D. That he's yes. the inferior recessive that gene. That he one. is garbage and <laughs> that he got the crappy genes. Yeah, it's kind of funny. He, he's, he's, you know, with his military history, the things that he's accomplished with his physical strength, his intelligence. Yes. They talk about how he's a genius with an IQ over 180. Yes. And he what's got funny, the recessive, all the recessive all, every, genes? Yeah, all of them? And I brought this up in the episode one, <laughs> or, or episode two, where I was like, really, like, can someone like this buff and good looking and like, yes. can, they, can they really have gotten all the recessive genes? Yes. Whatever's considered recessive? Like, okay, and now um, maybe we're conflating incessive with inferior. Okay. I don't know. Maybe well, yeah, that's true. Recessive. recessive does not necessarily have to mean. But he is conflating it though. He Liquid is, is conflating. He's the one doing. It. Yeah. So yes. so he thinks it's all garbagey, but it's like brown eyes are dominant, blue eyes recessive. That doesn't mean, does that mean blue, like, eyes blue eyes to are inferior. Blue eyes are inferior. Anyways, yeah. so yeah, he's conflating the two, and like, hey, there's some issues with that, I guess. So maybe that's how he can still be what he is, right. but have all the recessive genes. Right. But I think even in the game, it, it does, it's the game conflates those the, the, Yeah, the game is inferring that like he's not as uh, good of a yeah. soldier as Solid And Snake I guess, is. you know what, you know, I think the conflation exists because it's Big Boss we're talking about. Yes. And so any, any gene you got that wasn't the uh, expressive phenotype within Big Boss is the inferior. Worse. It's worse, yeah. Yes. Because he's the ideal perfect soldier, right? So, okay, so that's where the conflation kind of makes a little bit more sense. Um, now, but yeah, he's being a little funny about that. And then Snake is the one who's like, Metal Gear? And like <laughs> asking all the dumb questions. <laughs> and then it's like, no, Snake's the smart one. <laughs> but this guy who's got this elaborate genius plan, like, oh, he's the dumb one. It's yeah. like something's um, something's not adding up And here. as we find out later, it's actually it the is reverse. flipped. It is completely flipped. It's Solid Snake who got all yes. the recessive genes from Big Boss and Liquid who got all and of And once again, the breadcrumbs are there to see, right? Because yes. you've got Snake who's like, I don't know what my genes look like and I don't care. I <laughs> operate on instinct. Yes. And it's like, okay. Right. Okay, but then you've got this mastermind genius dude who's like about to start World War Three and convince the, the Pentagon to like, you know, he's like kind of got the world at his fingertips. Yeah. And it's like, no, he's the dumb one and Snake's the smart <laughs> one. I, th clearly that wasn't right. supposed that, to be the case. That should have been obvious. It should have been right. obvious. Right. <laughs> Oh, that's great. The guy who classic is fifty huskies or his only family. <laughs> his own, my only family. That's not yeah. the IQ one hundred and eighty guy. <laughs> <laughs> this whole game makes so much more sense <laughs> once you see the after credits scene. 
where it's right. like, oh, snake, okay, okay. Actually, this <laughs> makes perfect sense now. Yes. Everything makes perfect sense once you see that. That's great. All right, so um, you're going to fight against Metal Gear now. This is kind of a cool fight because you can't really damage it. Yeah, Otacon needs to come up with a way to like open up the the what the oh, nest or I whatever, so, so that we can actually this. hurt him. So there's a, a what's called a ray dome. It's like this circular little thing. I think Snake refers to it as that it looks like a shield, oh, right, like, yeah, a, like yeah. a shield that you hold in one arm. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, and he's like, if you if you destroy that, then he'll be blinded inside of the armor and he'll have to open up the cockpit to, to be see. able to see and then you can shoot him that way and 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 um snake asks you you built metal gear with a weak point <laughs> which is a gaming term right yes and and otacon says i like to think of it more as a character flaw. a character flaw <laughs> that's hilarious that is so perfect you built Metal Gear with a fetching weak point, dude. <laughs> you built the Death Star with like a destroy you here button. I know. Yeah. I was it's laughing. a trope though in action movies yeah. to have it's built into the plans. There's always a weak point. Yeah, always. a way to destroy it. Yeah. I guess that's what Baker did say from the beginning. If anyone knows of a way, Hal Emmerich will know. Yeah. And he built a character so go, go low and into behold. his Metal Gear because he it wanted can't it be to perfect. be. It can't be perfect. Yeah, exactly. It's that's just so funny. really funny. That is very funny. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you have to destroy the Ray Dome first, which will then force Liquid to open the cockpit, then you can actually kill him. Yeah. Um, so once you get through the first phase of that fight, uh, you haven't quite destroyed it yet, but Gray Fox swoops in yeah, to help yeah. you at the end. He delivers the final to blow to the Ray Dome that blinds Liquid. It's kind of funny because you then have kind of a heart-to-heart -heart with Gray Fox, and, yeah, and Liquid's yeah. back there just like blinded <laughs> in Metal Gear, just <laughs> in the background, just like not seeing anything, <laughs> shooting randomly, like walking around. Like, not, <laughs> they're just like talking about all this. In, that is like, so great. That is so great. <laughs> that is so great. <laughs> And for them to do that in the background, it's yeah. it's self awareness. They know what they're doing. It's freaking funny. <laughs> um, so oh my gosh. The, the the conversation that they have here is basically Gray Fox tells he's got his mask off now, by the way. Yeah. And he he tells uh, Snake that um, he was he the one killed. who killed Naomi's parents. Naomi's parents, yeah. But yeah. he wasn't able to bring himself to kill her right. as a girl. So he tried to like raise her yeah. instead. A little uh, Leon the Professional or something yes, like that going right. on here. Actually, that came out. Well, 90... no, that, that came out before this game, but yes. it came out after um, Hideo Kojima's father had passed away. But it's probably, oh, right. it probably still is relevant. Yeah. Um, so he asks, Gray Fox asks Snake to tell her that for him. Because yeah, he's going right. to like self-sacrifice in this battle. Yeah. Dude, I've, his self-sacrifice is brutal. It is really... It's Gray Fox gets Sacrifices himself. Up. Yep. <laughs> yep. Messed up. Uh, it gets splatted completely by yeah. Metal Gear. Um, and then you have the second phase of the fight where you shoot at uh, the cog pit a few times. Um, yeah. So Metal Gear is destroyed. And this is the second time now that Liquid escapes from an explosion. <laughs> yes. And it's like, the, the cutscene has him, is, is, is Snake like with his hands tied behind his back? It's like, it's like Snake got knocked out for a second and then Liquid like tied him up. I can't remember. And like set him down and he's gonna like explain everything to him. It was unclear to me in the PlayStation 1 version, maybe it'd be more clear. In I can't remember. Anyway, he's gonna explain to you like what yeah. And what all, everything that's going on. There. He has lots of reasons. <sighs> so, yeah, and do, I you have, have, do you have I notes have on lot. this? Let's just let... I have tons. I'm, I, I'm, I, have, I have so many notes. I go just for can't. It. I can't even. But, um, <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> one of Liquid's big motivating, what would you call it, thoughts, I guess, is that soldiers should be honored, as in the past, right? So a long time ago, soldiers used to be honored. Now nobody likes soldiers anymore. But he is, his genes have informed his self, his persona, that he has to be a soldier and he is one and he can't be anything else. And so if, for him to survive in the world, then soldiers need to be respected. Otherwise he won't thrive, right? Mm. He's just, he's worthless, right? Un unless he can be a soldier. Um, Liquid says, oh, this is fascinating. Liquid, okay, 
Liquid says, when he says that we enjoy killing, he's yeah. like, I know you, I, I see it in you. I can mm-hmm. tell you love killing. You enjoy the killing. Yes. But it's, he's looking, the way the camera is positioned, he's more or less looking at us. Oh yeah. The like player. The camera. He's looking into the camera. I do think there's probably a meta element to I this. think so. Yeah. Because they've broken the fourth wall multiple times. Yes. And now at this point, they're just like, yeah, you love killing, don't you? And well, it's like, you what, feel kind of weird. As players of games, yes. the types of games we all grew up playing. I mean, you, what are you doing 90% of the time? You're killing you're stuff. You're killing stuff. Even in like, like Mario, you're just jumping on things and killing right. things. Exactly. That's what you do. And so I felt like he was talking to us, the players, yeah. unsettling. And I think we, the camera might have gone first person for that moment. So, But that was, that was fascinating. That was really good. Um, but then I also said, no way a dude who looks like that got all the recessive genes. <laughs> He's such a freaking beast. Yeah, he is. He just looks like a, a huge beast. Um, so then he also brings up the fact that nature tends to favor asymmetry. Yes, that's right. right. And that is true. Yes. It's not always completely true phenotypically, right? Like, so your phenotypes will present more or less symmetrical, but, um, you know, your, your genes, your, your um, genotype, I guess, will, will have, like, there's part of your brain. This is interesting. So I put down uh, Ian McGilchrist because he wrote the book The Master and His Emissary, which is really good, which talks about how there is actually asymmetry all throughout the body, right? Now, it's mm-hmm. obvious where your stomach and your heart is, like, off-centered, but in the brain, right? right. The brain is not two symmetrical, like, halves. Right. So there's kind of like a, a twist kind yeah. of happening there within Asymmetry, the brain yeah. that sort of makes it look like the yin and yang kind of that oh, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little bit, it's subtle, it's subtle. Like most people look at a brain and say, ah, they look the same. Yeah. But they aren't technically exactly the same. And there's a lot of parts um, that you can look to that are like, you know, the human body and all, all animals. When animals become too perfectly symmetrical, they disappear from the fossil record. And it's like, no one really knows exactly why, but nature tends to favor asymmetry to a point. I wouldn't put it that way. I would say nature tends to fa- uh, favor a balance between symmetry and asymmetry. Yeah. That you can't be fully e- e- either or. Yeah. That you've gotta be kind of, you have to have your foot in the asymmetry. Um, otherwise, there's no point in the split. Like having two separate brains, having your left brain and your right brain is like if they're the exact data copied twice then you only need one like why do you need both they they have to be different otherwise there isn't a point yeah so anyways i thought that was super super good Uh, and then um he also talks about the selfish gene theory yes right? right which is great this is good stuff so liquid says he will follow exactly what his genes wants um and that means that the genes are in control right he's not in control the genes are, and the genes are essentially a Gnostic demiurge <laughs> that is just like it's yelled about, right? And mm-hmm. he's just gonna destroy the world. That the genes are going towards this point and no one can stop it, and it's headed towards this ultimate yeah, a, a destruction of everything. Fatalistic view. Yes, and also that like a, a benevolent God isn't in charge of things, but a destructive God that favors like killing and stuff. Like that's the God, that's the yelled about, right? And so, um, that's what's going on with him, and he's kind of giving into that. So it's uh, based on Richard Dawkins' book, The Selfish Gene, um, and it's basically most biologists uh, agree with Dawkins on this point uh, that the genes will do whatever they can to get into the next generation, yes. including sacrificing themselves, knowing that they have spread to other family members as yeah, well. Yeah, that happens with the all kinds can of keep species, going down. right? Like yeah, yeah. they'll mate and then like, like black widows and stuff. Or yeah, yeah. The, the, the female will eat the male or... Yeah, so the genes yeah. know, well, the genes may not know specifically that they're going to die, but the point is the genes don't care. The genes are ambivalent, but they will get passed down one way or the other. Yeah. And it's important that they develop some way to get passed down even if they themselves have to be sacrificed. So yeah, the selfish gene. So genes can be described as wanting something, right? There's a bit of an invisible hand going on with the theory of yeah. the selfish gene. Um, and it, uh, I bring up here that it's like the demiurge in control of everyone's fate. It controls others' actions to protect the own group or lineage, right? Sometimes referred to as altruism, right? Mm. And that's what uh, Richard Dawkins kind of pokes fun at there. Uh, but he, he t- says that, um, it's not just a group, it's not the right word to just say a group that's a group survival. He says lineage, it's lineage survival. Because once a group gets together and they're like, hey, let's fight for each other, 
well, it becomes a lineage. Like they intermate and they become, the lineage just goes from there. Yeah. And so however they protect each other is the lineage protecting itself. Anyways, it's, it's crazy stuff. It's an interesting mm. theory. Um, it's, um, yeah, it was a big deal, especially in the 80s and 90s. Um, I think people are less keen on it now, that it still drives most of what people talk about in terms of evolution, but it's kind of reaching like an end point where we may have to go back and through something more like epigenetics or some other field, we'd be able to go a little bit further along that his selfish gene only gets us so far, mm. right? Uh, but it explains a lot of evolution, which is crazy. Um, so then this other, okay, then, okay, now, now I'm done. I'm done with that. Okay. So that's my notes for for Liquid Snake, but I have one last note, which is kind of like a novel. Okay. Um, so Nick, Liquid has a tattoo. It's a sick yeah, tattoo. Yeah, I on was left wondering arm. about that. Okay. Yeah. So it's just blocks of it's just a mess of pixels. It doesn't look like much in PS One. Yeah. yeah. So I look it up online, and it's a really cool tattoo, and it's got like some pretty sick like symbolic value, right? So um, it's a snake winding up a sword, sort of like the medical image, you know. Uh, a snake winding up a sword with a banner overhead that reads temptation and revelation, right? Mm. So left to right. And then that's it. Like, that's more or less it. But a snake winding up a rod is like the rod of Asclepius. So it means healing because it's the medical right, symbol. The, the serpent that the, On a pole, the right? children of Israel had to Yes, look at. the golden serpent. Yeah, right. so I bring that up. Or the brass, uh, the br brass the serpent. serpent yeah. um, so it's also akin to the brass serpent, the uh, ne Nehushtan in the Bible. So it's the straight line with the curved line around it, right? So it hints at a type of duality between a winding, a live element and a straight, or a, a straight inanimate one. Mm. Sorry, I'm having trouble reading that. Um, a, or a straight inanimate object. So combining the two is what makes the symbol. The snake also represents renewal and rejuvenation as it sheds its skin. So the rod is associated with uprightness, verticality, and the like. But in the Bible, Moses' rod itself becomes a snake, right? Right. right. Um, and so you could say that Moses' rod is a solid snake in that regard, mm. right? So anyways, okay. I'm just throwing that out there. That's, that's, not, uh, that's not where I'm leading to here. Um, so the symbol represents both life and death, moving and unmoving, solid and fluid, curvy and straight, feminine and masculine. It's a type of duality of life, not as opposition, but together in harmony. So I should also mention here that Liquid Snake is the name. So the snake probably the snake probably represents himself. The snake on his tattoo is him. Oh, he's sure. he's the he's the the the, mo the mobile snake that is wrapping around the sword, right? So um, it would have been cool if they went with the rod of. Uh, Caduce, uh, Caduceus, since it's two snakes facing each other, yeah, winding up sweet. the same one. That'd and I think that's Hermes' rod. That would be sweet. Uh, but whatever, because he, as far as he knows, I mean, he got the tattoo. Like, for the game, it would have been sick to have the two snakes. Yeah, right. But for him, it wouldn't make sense for him to be like, yeah, we live in harmony. You know? so he's like, no, I'm the snake. I'm the freaking snake. Yeah. I, that's me, right? So yeah. there's one snake. There's only one snake there. Um, yeah, if we consider that solid snake is the rod and the mobile snake wraps around it and subdues it to control it, right? Then that, that makes a little bit more sense. Um, then uh, it's a cycle. That, uh, so it's like a cycle that revolves around an axis, right? So there's a bit of a center periphery thing going here as well. Kind of like I'd mentioned in Final Fantasy X podcast, you've got the center and then the periphery where all the change happens, you know? Yeah. And that it comes from uh, Jacques Derrida. So Jacques Derrida is this French philosopher from the 70s, and he's got some interesting stuff, um, some not good stuff and some great stuff, including this. Um, so the staff is the center, and the serpent, which moves around the center in the periphery, is uh, like an Ouroboros, right? That's spiraling upwards, like a cycle. Yeah. So we got that spiral image too. So in the Bible, the brass serpent also represents Jesus, the healer on the cross, right? And Jesus is the snake. Um, of course, along with Christ is the Antichrist of the book of Revelation. So next we have the sword, and I probably don't need to go into that much. The harmony of the solid, the duality, it kind of changes a little bit here. The lethal snake is now combined with the lethal sword, though both still symbolize life and death, straight and curved, masculine, feminine. It's now more geared towards death, right? So the sword could simply represent him being a soldier. So we have healing through war. Right, Some, uh, something like that, sure. right? So it's still healing, but the, the method, the center that you're healing around is the soldier, it's the battle, it's the war, it's the sword, right? Um, so 
I think that sounds pretty right. Um, yeah. Or healing through fighting, something like that. Glorifying the warrior, right? So the other fascinating part is that the, an upside down sword is, um, well, it's a cross. <laughs> so yeah. you have the hilt and then the, you know, going down. So not only does the brass serpent already, the, the symbol itself kind of calls reference back to um, the brass serpent, which Christ said that he would be put up like, like a serpent. But uh, it's a sword, it's a cross. So I mean, it just it lends to that imagery a lot better. Sure. So, but now we have the banner up the very top, right? So temptation and revelation. So temptation when paired with a snake, what do you freaking think that means? Sure, yes, <laughs> right? Right. So it's definitely referring to the Garden of Eden. So the snake tempts in the beginning, but the revelation, the snake is bound by an angel, right? So mm. you have Genesis and Revelation is more or less yeah, what, right. what this is saying. The beginning and the, the, end. Beginning and the end, exactly. Yeah. Um, so temptation and revelation is like Alpha and Omega. It's a reference to the beginning and the end where in both instances a snake is present. He has control. He is in charge. His plan encompasses everything, beginning to end. He is the snake that brings about the revelation, continuing the work of the snake who in the beginning brought about the temptation. So he sees himself as the end of, mm. of um, a process that was going on since the beginning. You could say he is the Antichrist from the revelation of John, which I guess would make solid snake Christ, <laughs> <laughs> since they're opposites. Yes. Uh, this is my reading of the tattoo and what it could potentially mean for Liquid Snake. What do you think? <laughs> I think it's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's like pretty simple. It's just a snake, a sword, and, and two words. But like, I think it's pretty deep. There's a lot there. And if you want to, I, I, I did in, in researching this, I did um, see a little bit more of about Liquid Snake oh. than I wanted to. Oh, a little okay. bit of a spoiler. But if anybody wants to spoil the game for yourself, um, look up the actual, the real name, Liquid Snake's actual name. Oh, his actual and, name. And his story. Yeah. Yeah. It's biblical. That's, what, that's all I'll say. Yeah. So it, the, the references to the Bible with Liquid Snake, I think, are pretty, like, yes. intentional. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's legit. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Good um, stuff. All right. So let's return for just a second to the whole fatalistic, it, it, the, the genes dictate everything. Oh, the selfish, The yeah, whole yeah. thing that the, the, demiurge the theme of, of this, the theme of this game, yeah, right? yeah. which is pitching this idea, like are our genes in control or do we have free will yes. kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the part of the game, unfortunately, that I really am not a huge fan of, which is the yeah. ending in which they try to punctuate the point that no, you can choose to live <laughs> And like the very your genes end, yeah, yeah. don't dictate your life. You can yes. choose it. That's the answer they're going to try to give you to that question they've raised, yeah. which is a very interesting question in light particularly of what they knew about genes at the yes. time yes, yes, yes. and where they thought this may be going in the near yeah, future. Yeah. Um, and the way that they try to answer it, I feel, was exceptionally lame. <laughs> And it's cheesy very, very didactic. And it's just like, a, like just telling yeah. you and not like yes. giving you anything to chew on or think about. I know. It's I just hate like that. this is the answer and th the end. Yes. So I'm 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 not going to like super harp on that point, but just know that that's how I feel about this ending. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. <laughs> like gotcha. I, it just um it just does not wrap up in a way that I found or find very like satisfying given yeah. like how much there is there with the selfish gene and like all this stuff that you could talk yeah. about to yeah, where you could really leave cool that stuff. open to think about more. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it basically is, wraps yeah. it up in the most B-movie cliche way possible. This is why I, I really don't like it when folk tales or um, Aesop's fables and things will put the moral of the story at the end. You know, yes. like the moral of this story is I hate I hate it every time. Because it's like, <laughs> just tell me the freaking moral. Like yeah. why why the story? Why the story? You know, why the just story? Tell me and what I should think about it. Exactly. And th this is why like we talked about this a little bit with uh, Undertale on yeah. Patreon for everyone who wants to know. We're talking yeah. about Undertale on Patreon. Um, like the idea of like dissecting a story and finding uh, trying to find its meaning and then throwing away the husk and like, this is <laughs> this is what it's saying. It's right. like, no, it's a whole big thing. Right. Don't don't think that you can just take the one part out of it and, oh, now we don't need the story. Or yeah. here's the story with the part, but this is the valuable part, just so you know. Like, I, it's it's really not good when games do this. Yeah. Now, did B action movies in the 80s do this? <laughs> That's the question. Because if they did, then uh, it's, right it's, in line. It's on the nose. It's, yeah. you know, 
like I said, like there's all these interesting theories and questions and like there was interesting stuff that they had brought up. Yeah. And then they just try to like tell you, nah. Here's what you should think Here's what about you it. should do. <laughs> yes. Here's how you should live. Yes, yes. And I just find that to be, um, I don't know, it's just not that interesting of, mm -hmm. of a way to like wrap up a story that had a lot of potential for yeah. exploring that further. Now, I agree with you with the one caveat that I, I've not played the subsequent games, but my understanding is because of the lineage of the games, the meme, gene, scene, like that whole thing we talked about in episode mm -hmm. one, that they will kind of address yes. some of the alternative hypotheses from this game that weren't immediately addressed within the game, right? Yeah. So this game clearly has a theme and they're trying to give you the, you know, you can overcome your genes message, right? Yes. But, but it's not the end of the story. But really. there are other games that this will be brought up um, by many people, I think. There yeah. are other games that might begin to posit alternate hypotheses than Naomi's right. at the end here. Let me just say that Metal Gear Solid 3's ending is masterclass. <laughs> Hopefully we can get there Metal soon. Metal Gear Solid 3's ending that game. is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, I, 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 I guess I mentioned this elsewhere. I guess, maybe I hadn't mentioned this yet mm. on, the pod, on this podcast. I don't know why I hadn't, if I hadn't. But I played Metal Gear Solid 3 first. Oh, yes, you did, you did. Which yeah, is a decent one. starting point. It's yeah. kind of the beginning of the larger series story anyways. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I started, and the ending of that game is really, really good. Nice. So when I played the first game, I wasn't, I think, affected by it in the same way a lot of people were in Because you knew that they were continuing the story in yeah. a different way. And um, yeah, well, people in it wasn't like my first experience with Metal Gear. It wasn't yeah. like my starting point, and it wasn't like this mind blowing. Holy crap! The PlayStation's so cool. <laughs> These three D graphics. Yeah, you probably had the opposite, you know, <laughs> reaction. Right, because I was going yeah. back to it. But yeah, yeah. I mean, in the last episode, I talked about how fetching amazing that plot twist with Liquid being Master yeah, that was great. Miller that was the whole time. Yeah, so there's, great. I mean, this is a great game. I'm by no means saying that this means like I, the game sucks or something. <laughs> I just I just don't love this ending is all I'm saying. Yes, yes. But course. essentially from this point, Liquid, um, there's like a time limit. You, you have like, you look over Meryl's over there like laying down on the ground. Yes. And Snake asks if she's alive and he says, well, I don't know. She was several hours ago, but like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, this is strange. Okay. So this first, is strange. First, 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 I skipped something. Go ahead with what you're going to say. Though. Well, the strange thing is that there's a bomb. He's going to just kill everyone, but it's tied to her life, and when she dies, then the bomb goes off, right? Yeah. That's just kind of confusing. I, I'm actually so confused by that, but I, I, I want to <laughs> look it up. Because yeah. I forgot to mention the, 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 the strike. Uh, oh, yes. Because, like... Campbell calls in. Yes, that's and you right. You have a conversation with him, and about, the Secretary of Defense shows up. Yeah, but right? they're sending a drone strike to not yeah. a drone strike, but no. uh, they're going to send some planes in to, to bomb the place. Yeah, they're just going to. They're blow actually going to nuke it, <laughs> <laughs> but um, to destroy all the evidence of that any of this was happening. Mm -hmm. um, the Secretary of Defense is the one calling this. The apparently the president doesn't know anything about it. Yes, the, the Secretary of Defense is acting alone. And uh, he wants to bury all the evidence of all of this and just get rid of it entirely. So they're just going to kill them. And, and Snake, both Snakes, Liquid and Solid, are part of that. They want them to yeah, yeah. die. They, they don't want, want them to, them to survive. They yeah. want the whole thing buried. Um, but Campbell's going to do everything he can to sort of like delay it. So since he's t technically still in command of the mission, he's going to like tell them to call it off, which will confuse the chain of command. And wait a minute, yes, he told me to do they'll this, think and he's in you're charge. telling me to do this, and yeah. what should we do? So that I'll buy you time to get out. Sometime, yeah. But then he gets arrested on the spot. Yes. The Secretary of Defense gets on the codec yeah, and starts yeah, yeah. talking to you directly and basically explains that... Um, what is the Pentagon trying to do? Colonel, answer me. And Campbell says, the Secretary of Defense has taken over active control of this operation. He's on his way there by AWACS. Snake says, what for? Campbell says, to bomb the place. Snake says, what? Campbell says, not only that, B-2 bombers just lifted off from uh, Galena Air Force Base. They're carrying B-6113 surface piercing tactical nuclear bombs. So they're going to like mm. hit the base underground. They're wiping yeah. the whole yeah. thing out. Snake says, what? Metal Gear is destroyed. Tell the Secretary of Defense. Campbell says, the Secretary of Defense heard that Naomi double-crossed us, and he's worried about Fox dying. 
now there's no more danger of a nuclear strike from Metal Gear. He's going to do whatever's necessary to cover up the truth of what really happened here. So that's the other part of it. They're trying to wipe out Fox Die too. Yeah. Um, because who knows who else was programmed to be killed by Fox Die. Snake says he's going to drop a nuclear bomb to vaporize all the evidence along with anyone who knows anything. And Campbell says, don't worry, Snake, I'll stop the nuclear strike. Snake says, how? Campbell says, I may only be a figurehead here, but I'm still officially in command of this mission. If I issue an order to delay the strike, it'll confuse the chain of command and at least buy you time, and it'll give you a chance to escape. And Snake's worried about Colonel, the colonel's position. If you do that, like you'll be tried for treason, or yep. you're, you're going to be... And, and Snake's like, it's okay, this is the least I could do after all the lies and everything, right? right? And this is where he kind of reveals um, that they used Merrill. Like, they sent Merrill on purpose as they knew this revolution was about to happen so they could manipulate the Campbell into coming into this mission. Because Campbell yeah. was retired prior to this. So he says, the truth is Foxhound was already the subject of an undercover investigation. Merrill was transferred to this base just before the terrorist attack as a way of manipulating me. Mm. So he can't tell you all these things. He looks suspicious yeah, the whole yeah. game. But it's because he's being manipulated because his niece yes. is there. And it's like, she's yeah. going to die unless you do what we say kind of a thing. So that's when Snake realizes it. Those bastards, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So Campbell then says, I'm ordering them to cancel the bombing run. After that, there's no turning back. Ah, oh, what are you doing? And then this is where uh, Houseman, the Secretary of Defense, gets yeah. on. Roy Campbell's been relieved of duty. This is Secretary of Defense. Jim Houseman. Jim was the one Baker was talking about earlier. Did Jim send you? Did Jim send you, yeah, yeah. Right. Snake says, put the colonel back on. He's placed under arrest. Top secret. Inf he, he leaked top secret information. That's a, high, a crime of high treason. Um, Snake says, ridiculous, and Hausman says, yes, he's a ridiculous man. He truly believed <laughs> that he was in command of this operation the whole time he wasn't, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so the part I wanted to read here, let me skip down a little bit. Oh, he says, the president ordered this, Snake asks. Um, and he says, the president's a busy man. I have complete authority here. So he's acting on his own. Um, Hasman says, don't worry, we've prepared a convincing cover story. We'll simply say that the terrorists exploded a nuclear device. Snake says, smart, you'll be murdering everyone here. The scientists, the genome army, everyone. Uh, Hasman says, Donald, the DARPA chief is already dead. Snake says, so you didn't mean to kill the DARPA chief after all? And Hasman says, he was my friend. Mm. So Snake says, you could care less about what happens to everyone else, huh? And Hasman says, well, if you give me the optic disc, I might consider saving them. So he wants the, the testing data yeah, that yep, Anderson yep. gave, or, uh, not Anderson, that Baker gave to it. And Snake basically says, I don't have it anymore, yeah. it's gone. And he's like, oh, uh, you know, too bad. <laughs> I guess we'll just have to blow everything <laughs> and up. And now there. you're gonna die. Yeah. Uh, so he cuts the transmission there. Um, so this is where Liquid gets up and says, there's no way out for us now. Like, we can't escape, right? Yeah. Let's finish this. Uh, before the airstrike, I have to kill you. Like, it's the only thing that can make me fulfill my purpose. Yes. And they have a freaking fist fight. Yeah, and you yeah, have a time limit. No weapons. To go to, to get over to Merrill. Yeah. So, if you submitted to Ocelot's torture earlier in the game, Merrill will be dead. Yeah, yeah. In the scene after you punch Liquid off the edge and he falls. I, I, this was kind of funny because... Liquid's like explaining the situation to you. What does he say? He says I can't remember. Um, something that when she dies or that when she dies it'll trigger something. Do you see this? It will be the time limit for our final battle. This nuclear module is set to detonate at the precise moment of her death. So he death. is going to blow up a nuke. Yeah, yeah. At her, when she dies it and, detonates and the nuke And he knows somehow. exactly when she's going to die. If you win, you might still be able to save her. You can enjoy one brief moment of love before the end. If you cross this line, you'll fall. At this, uh, and this will kill even you. So falling from here will kill even you, beastly, solid snake with all the dominant genes. With all genes. the dominant genes, yeah, yeah. Even you can't survive this fall. Yeah. Liquid survives the fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Well, of course he does. Because you, you fight him and he falls and he goes, Snark! and you think he's dead, right? Yeah. Falls. 
and then you go over to Meryl. Now, if, if you submitted the torch while Meryl's dead and Otacon's gonna come into the scene yeah. and talk to you and be like, people die and like, I lost Sniper yeah, Wolf yeah. too. We were laughing so hard while we were oh, watching Oh, it was this great season. because it was like, oh, <laughs> You know, she, Meryl, he comes up and he's like, Meryl's never gonna um, forgive you. Yes. Meryl, Meryl can't forgive anyone anymore. She's gone. Because she's dead. <laughs> like, yes, thank you, please leave. He, I'm mourning Snake's right now. really pissed, like, what do you know? Like, shut up. <laughs> and, yeah, and he says something about like, trying to blame yourself like makes it easier, or something like that. Yeah, he's um, got a lot of uh, cliche It's lines. a lot of cliches. Yeah. If Meryl, if you didn't submit to the torture, Meryl will be alive and Meryl will talk to you. Um, and she says some similar stuff. Oh, uh, she, when, so when she first, um, you know, comes to and we're able to talk to her, uh, but we got to escape, right? Snake says something like, well, looks like there won't be a love scene after all. Yes. And then he get, we get up and we have to go. Yes. That's just great. I think that's, so, <laughs> that's just so fun. Yeah. There's no way to talk about To that. trigger a love scene in yeah. this game, is there? I don't think so. I don't think so. Either. I do know that there is a way to remove um, Meryl's pants. I don't know if it's just for like one scene or if it's for the whole game. Oh, really? What? But like, <laughs> it's when you first get into where the DARPA chief is at. I don't know. It's like you wait a certain amount of time and she's doing some exercises or something and mm -hmm. then she like takes them off and then for the game she's like not wearing pants or something. That's the only thing I can think of where there's like some secret something like that <laughs> that you can trigger and I'm not that's even fun. sure how it really works because I didn't do it but that's funny. Um, anyway yeah so Meryl will either survive and go with you to escape the, during this escape sequence or Otacon will be with you during the escape sequence mm. depending on what you did um, okay so you 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 know he, he, it's like it's too cold outside you won't survive. And then Snake mm -hmm. looks to the right. Oh, there's my sneaking suit. Yeah, right. my sneak it's suit. right there. <laughs> <laughs> he goes and puts it on. And she's got some, like, vest, I guess, that will keep yeah. her warm. And you start leaving. And you get into a Jeep. And it's got, like, a When Otacon, like, opens the doors again or something, right? Yeah. And he's supposed to run away and leave. But uh, he stays. He sticks yes. around. And he's like, no, I'll stay here until they drop the nuke. Right. Like he's going to be a hero for his last moment. Yes. But he does eventually say he found a reason to live and that he's not going to die. Like he doesn't plan on dying. Um, let me find yeah. it here in the... Because this is the Otacon version. Where's the... Where's the version? Okay, the Meryl ending. Here we go. There's some... I mean, I guess we could, we probably should break down this dialogue a little more, but like... It's just, I didn't there's really not take really that here. much to it. It's just kind of cheesy stuff. <laughs> like, again, I, I just really didn't love this ending. Um, so Otacon is saying, don't worry, I'm staying here. It's my own decision. Snake says, it's a hardened shelter, but they're going to use surface piercing nuclear bomb. It's not going to hold. Mm -hmm. And Otacon says, I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know. He says that to you also in the other version of the, his ending. If he okay, did. right. Um, he says, Snake, I'm a complete person now. I've found a reason to live. And Snake says, good, don't die on me. And Otacon says, same to you. Take care of Meryl, okay? So mm. he's planning to stay as long as possible, but he's not planning on dying. He, yeah, he, he does want to try and get out. Yeah, okay. Okay, so. The escape scene is super fun, by the way. It is. You get into a I Jeep. It. She's driving. You're on the back. You're Rambo style machine gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shooting like crazy. Driving this Jeep out. See daylight there, blah, psh, big crash. Is it, it? It's they saw liquid, right? Yeah, liquid, liquid shows up. Like the other, yeah, yeah. Jeep, and, and we both kind of crash as soon as we get through. out. Yeah, and yeah. then they think, oh, liquid survived that freaking fall, but yes. he didn't survive that crash. No way, even though he survived an <laughs> uh, exploding helicopter. And, yes, the uh, Metal Gear. Metal Gear explosion. Yes, <laughs> and there's no way he survived a car crash. No freaking way. But uh, he did. But they're, they're kind of trapped underneath the Jeep, right? And then, like, Liquid gets out. And he starts walking over, and he's, like, pointing his gun at Snake. And then all of a sudden, boom, you hear the gurgling sound. The yeah, fox die. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fox. And then Snake says, die, fox die. So Liquid yeah. gets killed by the fox die, like, right there at the end. Right before so, he had a chance to kill him. At this part, we've got some more intercom 
conversations. This is where Campbell's like, hey, everything's good. Like smooth sailing from yep. here on out, right? Turns um, out he was acting alone. He, uh, yes, was, the, when the president found yeah, out. Campbell yeah, Campbell yeah. says, I was able to get in contact with the president. Metal Gear, the training exercise, all of it, it was all the Secretary of Defense acting alone. As, uh, which is what a president would say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any of them. The order's been rescinded. The, 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 the planes have been called back. Yeah, the planes there's aren't no, going to do that. There's not going to be a strike. And then Campbell says, Washington isn't stupid enough to use nukes to cover up a few secrets. And then uh, <laughs> Snake is like, I wonder about that. <laughs> 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 which is so, so yeah. right, so right. Yep. Um, uh, and then he, in one ending, he'll say, Colonel, you can rest easy. Merrill's fine. Or he'll inform him Merrill's dead. Merrill's dead. dead. Now, yeah. if we inform him that Merrill's dead... Yes, yeah, so there's a different dialogue here. There is some very important information. In the Merrill Lives ending, Campbell yeah. never reveals this to you. As far as I know. I'm looking at the dialogue here. I'm not seeing it. I don't remember seeing <laughs> it. I watched the scene. I didn't hear it. Yeah. Then we watched the other ending. I heard <laughs> it. And I, I was wondering because I knew this fact. But I was like, do they not reveal in this game this yeah. that, that Campbell's actually her father? And then we watched the Otacon ending, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's in that ending only that, ending. that he'll reveal, I was actually Meryl's father. Yes. I had an affair with my brother's wife. She sent me a letter informing me this is my child, not my brother's child. So anyway, I kind of said, I think, in the last episode, there was a bit of a setup here where Snake was telling Campbell that Meryl became a soldier to connect with her father. To be like her father, yeah. And he was like, oh, really, kind of a thing, right? Yeah, like, because yeah. he knows he's actually her father, so. And he's a anyway. soldier, so perfect. So, yeah. Campbell is actually Meryl's father, which is why he's even more manipulated to yes, take yes. action in all of this and do what they told him to do and yep. whatnot. <clears throat> okay. So that's fascinating. So, then Naomi jumps oh, on. Oh, uh, and Campbell's also basically saying no one expects you to return from this, so you can like right. go live a life and like yeah, go retire. Yeah, you don't have yeah, yeah. No, no one has to know that you or Merrill lived basically, so, because um, Snake says me neither. I better not show my face around here. And Campbell says no danger of that. You two officially died after your jeep sank into the ocean. Nice. <clears throat> I guess that would be. Well, because then he also says, what about Otacon or Hal Emmerich? you got to bring someone in to take him out. He's like, okay, leave it to me. And Snake starts calling yeah. him Roy because he says, I'm not a colonel. Stop calling me colonel. Okay, yeah, yeah. So they're friends. They're buddies. Um, Snake says, the battery on these nanomachines will run out soon. They won't be able to follow us, so they can't be tracked anymore. So they're going to be able to go off and into the sunset, and no one will find them ever yep, again. frolic in the snow. Okay. Mei Ling found on her GPS... On the satellite, she was able to find, so not GPS, but their image. satellite story. image, She yeah. found a satellite image of a snowmobile. Yes. Inside of a Except cave. Except that it's inside <laughs> of a cave. I don't know how now, she saw it. <laughs> somehow she saw it, and they knew where it was, and it was in a cave, and she, they must have, like, really good satellites. <laughs> like, better than you would expect. Yep, so that's how they're going to escape, is on this snowmobile. Yeah. But Snake brings up one more thing about Fox Dye. He wants to know if he's going to die or not. This is where Naomi comes on the line. She wants to tell you face to face, I think is what he says. And so Naomi says, I heard about my brother. So she's talking about Gray Fox. Snake essentially does not tell her what Gray Fox told him to tell her. Yeah. He does not tell her that Gray Fox killed your parents. He says other, <laughs> he, he says, um, he says she, that Gray Fox told me to tell you. And it was just one line. Forget that, about him yeah, and go with your own Yeah, just go life. live, yeah. Frankie said that? Yeah, he also yep. said he'll always love you, Naomi. Your brother just saved you and me and the whole world. He fought yep. with every ounce of strength. So he makes Gray Fox look good in the end. He doesn't yes. reveal his dark secret. Yep. Um, he wasn't really my brother anymore, she says. He's been, he, since Zanzibar, he's just been a ghost looking for a place to die. She's really emotional yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I really liked that line. That was good. Um, so... Then Snake says, Naomi, Liquid died from Fox Die 2. What about me? When am I going to go? This, same, same genes. This annoyed me to no end. Yeah, that this Naomi is, would this not give him an answer to this. I don't know why she won't. And, and I know that it's tied into they're trying to like punctuate the it's theme, but I, I just don't yeah. like it at all. They're making a statement. So when am I going to go? She says, that's up to you. Like, no, it's not. No, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah. No, well, it it's, isn't. It's up to his genes, and if he is his genes, then it is up to him. But Jeez. if he is something other than the genes, then it's not up to him. 
So Snake says, what do you mean? And Naomi says, everybody dies with when their time's up. It's, it's, like, it's like, they've been <laughs> no, no, so no. vague okay, okay. this whole game. And oh, even now man. when it's all resolved, they still won't fetch and tell him anything. It's yeah. so irritating. It dude. is, it is. They keep secrets from him the whole time. And even in the end, they're just like keeping more secrets from him. But it's like meaningful this time. So there's an episode of South Park where Kenny, Kenny's like about to die. <laughs> Which is funny because he dies every episode. Right. Well, he used to. Um, and in this particular episode... It's like he's in a hospital and everyone's so sad because Kenny's going to die. And uh, they ask, like, give it to me straight, doctor. Like, what's wrong? His time is running up. <laughs> his t- Like, but, but why? Like, it, it's just his time. His time. It's almost up. He, he's running out of time. We need more time. And that was all they would say. And it's the funniest thing ever because everyone's just like, what? Like, I don't get it. But that's like... It's stereotypical. That's like exactly it's what It's a this typical is. thing, yeah. It's so annoying. This is basically uh, like a parody of South Park. So then he asks us again, yeah, so when's mine up? And she's like, it's up to you how you use the time left to you. Live, Snake. That's yeah. all I can say to you. Why? Like, just, you don't have to, just tell me. Yeah. Is it tomorrow? Is it like, is it really, really soon? Or yes. is there going to be some time to do what you're saying? Is there going to be some time to live? Like, why is she not telling him Anything. Anything. It's so she could even annoying. just say, I don't know. Like, that would be fine. That if she would be doesn't fine know, too. I don't then really say, know. I don't know. But instead, she's got the Gandalf, like, all you have to do is <laughs> what the time that is given to yeah, you. You know, right, like, right. okay, thank you. But, like, really, 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 <laughs> really. Just say you don't know. Just say, I don't know. Yes. But she does know. I would be fine with that answer yes. if she didn't know. But she does. But she does know, and she's not <laughs> telling him. Even after him having proved to her, I don't know, that she he's not worth getting revenge on the way she thought. Yes, she, with uh, Gray Fox and all that. Yeah, yeah. Just like, fetch, dude. I was just but very But she's just got that. this just wonderful, wonderful... And then uh, there's like a, like a freaking diatribe she goes through here about yes, like about living. about herself, about her own life and if trying to figure out who she was, right? Each person is born with their fate written into their own genetic code. It's unchangeable, it's, immutable. It's the, but that's yeah. not all there is to life. I finally realized that. Exactly. Heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you before the reason that I was interested in genes and DNA because I wanted to know who I was and where I came from. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was, who my parents were. And I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. Just like with the genome soldiers, you can input all the genetic information, but that doesn't make them into the strongest soldiers. The most we can say about DNA is that it governs a person's potential strengths, potential destiny. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. Snake, whether or not you're in the Fox Die program isn't important. Yes, it is, dude. (laughs) The important thing is that you choose life and then live. Don't think, or don't you think, Snake? Don't worry. Choose I'm going life. to choose to live life. I don't care about you. I know. Who this is not about you. Him? This is not about you. I have fox die. I, I want to know. know if I'm going to die and today You or not. injected it into me. Any time now, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have a heart attack. Please tell yeah, me yeah, yeah. whether it's today yes. or not so I can prepare for my death. Please. Right. He's driving. Right. Like, He's driving gosh. his automobile. It's, it's not about you. <laughs> Genes exist to pass down our hopes and dreams for the future through our children. Living is a link to the future. That's how all life works. Loving each other, teaching each other. That's how we change the world. I finally realized it. The true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. I freaking hate this. The true meaning of life. <laughs> I freaking hate this. Yeah. Like, I have a similar problem the with the ending of um, uh, Chrono Cross. Oh, I haven't played that game still. I don't want you, the writer of the story, to pontificate and explain to me what I should take from all of this, particularly in avoiding a very direct question (laughs) that the dude deserves an answer to. Yes, if anything, yeah, like, or if nothing else. Like, why are you, why are you avoiding answering that question to tell me, no, it's more important to just use the time that's given to you. I've already kind of explained earlier why I don't like sort of direct answers like that to interesting philosophy and yeah. scientific questions that they brought up earlier. But like this just this is just a huge nothing burger to me. It's they're just saying yeah. nothing really. Like I mean not saying nothing. They're saying nothing in the fact that like this is a thing kind of everyone 
we've heard a thousand bajillion times in our life. We all understand life is precious. You don't know how much time you have left. You and need more you should take time. advantage of the time you have and yeah. tell your loved ones that you love them. And all you have to your decide life. is what to do with yes. the time given live to Live your life as if it's, it's an your encouraging last day. Yes. Don't take it for granted. Got it. We yes. all know that. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to talk about here whether genes dictate your life or not. Right. This is not the answer to that question. <laughs> Please, come on. Anyway, I'm done oh, talking great. about that. So, um... There's a really anti-deterministic message here at the end. It's less materialistic, less rationalistic. Um, you aren't your atoms or your DNA. You're more than what is specifically scientifically measurable. But trying to find out who you are by analyzing your DNA in the first place is an admission that you don't know what people are. <laughs> <laughs> like just in general, all humans. Like yeah. there's a thing, but then there's the experience of the thing. There's like the subjectivity, right? The experience of the thing. Like what, what is a chair? Is it a wooden chair? Is a wooden chair cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin? If somebody asks you what a chair was, would that be your answer, right? Yeah. Like, would you put a chair under a microscope to find out what it is? Like, no. <laughs> a chair is a thing that you can sit on. That's what a chair is. That's all. That is what a chair is. And if it's a, if it's a bad chair, then it, it's a chair that you can't sit on. That's a bad chair. It's a good chair. It's a I chair you can sit on. I have on. to ask you this real quick because it just came to my mind. I did watch the video you told me about, the Veritasium one. Yeah. Or it's a, do it's chairs a, it's, exist? Um, yes, the Do Chairs Exist by um, Vsauce. 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 I said Veritasium. Did you see that one? I did. I watched it yes. just a few months ago. In yeah. light of this, everyone just watch that video. Watch look it, up, please look watch up. it. Do, Do chairs, chairs exist? exist it's got 20 Vsauce. million views. Fascinating video. Okay, go yeah, ahead. it's wonderful stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, do chairs even exist? Is like the question, right? So if you're analyzing things by atoms, you're kind of starting at the wrong place. But um, the use of a thing is really important by a factor of a hundred than what the thing is technically made out of, right? The abstract nature, the spirit of the thing. That's what it is. Uh, that is what we can understand. That's what we can make sense of. How about yourself? And I bring up the whole: Would you put your arm under a microscope, a microscope, to find out who, to find out about yourself, right? Yeah. Um, or a painting, right? If you're like, how about a painting? If you want to analyze a painting, would you look at it under a 1,000 x zoom, <laughs> right? Aimed at one tiny point in the canvas, Missing like what the would, for what the would trees. that exactly, exactly? Yeah. Um, so Naomi says she didn't find anything. She didn't learn anything from that method. <laughs> Too right. Too right. You didn't. Um, she then says that the raw material of a person signifies only potential. I think that's pretty interesting, right? Look, look I like it's that. It's like raw material is potential. That's what raw material is. Yes. Well, it's, it's chaos. It's, it's potential chaos, from the chaotic abyss from which value can be found, which in itself is like a chaotic just potential, just raw potential. So it's like, all right, something like that. This clarifies something for me. Yeah. I like that as like a realization she has. I yes. don't like it as a realization and, and an avoidance of answering Snake's question <laughs> about know. whether or not he's going to die today. The emotion of the situation is betrayed by like this forcing in of a, the, the uh, what's the word? The didactic like messaging. Like yes. into your brain, like with a hammer and a nail. Just yes. like, into your brain. And it's like, but there was an emotional scene. Our character's gonna die. Yes. This isn't the time for that. And she's pontificated on all of this previously. So yes. we don't have to do this. We just don't have to do I this. I just don't like it. Yeah, I, I just don't like it. So Snake is ready to live for someone else. So yes. as he's going out. He takes Naomi's message he's with to heart. Meryl. Yeah. And he's like, you know, she didn't tell me, Jack. <laughs> but, you know, she was right. Let's go live life, Meryl. The two of us, you know. And so... um Snake's ready to live for someone else. Because the question is, what do your genes say? What do yeah. your genes say now? Well, my genes say I'm about time to live for someone else, right? Which yeah. is still the selfish gene theory, by the yes, way. Yes, it just, is. Because you know, of whatever. Um, of course, this is still in keeping with Dawkins and Hamilton's theory as a lineage. Because yep. they're going to have babies. And their baby's genes yep. will be, yeah. And Naomi says in the, after the credits, you mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by our genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. The important thing is that you choose life and then live. So that is that is essentially what Hideo Kojima's answer to the, the question posed by the theme yes. <laughs> is. But then we have a really interesting post-credits. Yes, oh, but first, real quick. Um, here. We have, yes, we have like the, the nuclear plurif right. proliferation stuff. Yes, right. So there's a few, and not, so as if 
Hideo Kojima didn't just hammer his message home with the theme directly. He now also has to like very explicitly tell you, "Hey guys, the game's over, but here is my here's my message to you." Yes. There are there were 60 million nuclear or 60,000 60, yeah. nuclear warheads in the world as of 1980. Now there's like 30,000 28,000. Yeah. Like that. And so like the the world still sucks and can't we all become activists against like nuclearization or something. So I put down some of this Get rid of nukes, y'all. Is that, that's what I said. <laughs> it says 26,000 nukes, so now it's closer. There's about 10,000 total nukes today in the world today. Yeah. Now, these nukes are um, 100 times more powerful, yes. so the destructive power is actually greater than when there were 60. <laughs> but whatever. It's the number, the abject, what abject, the absolute number is going down, right? Uh, so it's slow progress, but it's better. The number's still going down, but it started to level off. So it's kind of yeah. flatlined a little bit. Yeah. And because China's entered the picture, right. and then actually it's ticked up in the past five years or so because Russia invented a new nuclear warhead mm. that is called Satan, I think. Oh, and geez. it is the most powerful nuclear warhead that anyone's ever seen. And Russia just barely made it. And they've made a few of them, so that's a tick up in the number of nukes now. And now everyone's going to... Anyways, the world's kind of going crazy right now. So who knows what happens in the future. But uh, the U.S. and Russia both have around 5,000 still. And um, they are way, way bigger, so it's really not all that much better. Yeah. Okay, so that's all I got to say about so that part. So then you hear at the end of the credits, Ocelot talking to someone. Yes. He says, yes, sir, the entire unit yes, was wiped sir. out. Yeah. Those, are, uh, those two are still alive. He's re referring to Meryl and... Snake, I believe. Oh, yeah, and before this, we see Snake as a musher and Naomi giving us even more... <laughs> Even more like, yeah, like live, 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 live for someone right. else, which is fine. Um, but yeah, we see him mushing some dogs. It's like live footage, I think, yeah. of a musher with yes. 50 dogs. Right, kind of. his 50 huskies. Yeah, but then after that, there's a black screen, and then we see this. So and then he says, the vector? Yes, sir, fox die should become activated soon, right on schedule. So Ocelot... So everything's going according to plan. Ocelot was deeper at, at a higher level than what he seemed to be the whole game. Yes. And yep. we, we keep finding this out. He Ocelot was, more was actually deeper and higher uh, level in knowledge as far as to what's going on than even Liquid was. I wouldn't have picked him <laughs> of all the people. <laughs> yeah. Like he's just the revolver flippy dude. Well, that was his cover, I guess. But <laughs> okay, okay. He says, yes, sir, I recovered all of Rex's dummy warhead data because he took it from us when we got ah, captured. Ah, that's right. Right? That's no, funny. sir, my cover is intact. So he was, he's, so he is not, is his cover. Yeah. Nobody knows who I really am. Yes, the DARPA chief knew my identity, but he's been disposed of. Yes, the inferior one, and this is the one you only get with the Merrill ending. Know. Okay, if you, yes. If you're yeah. in the Otacon ending, you don't get this part. Um, but in the Merrill ending, he'll say, yes, the inferior one was the winner after all. So Liquid was actually the dominant gene yep. receiver and solid snake was the, the inferior the inferior one yeah so he says that's right until the very end liquid thought he was the inferior one yes sir i agree completely it takes a well-balanced individual such as yourself to rule the world <laughs> that line's kind of funny yeah. no sir he's no a one up. yeah no one knows that you were the third one mm. solidus now this is big yeah because they said of the eight clones the fetuses yeah. only two were allowed yep. and to the other live, six were were disposed of but this is a third one yeah named solidus what should i do about the woman or what should i do about the woman yes sir i'll keep her under surveillance yes thank you goodbye mr president mr that's president. what it leads off on so the president Boom, did dude. know the president was in charge all along the whole time and yeah, there's something deeper going on, which we will have to talk about when we cover Metal Gear Solid 2 at some point in the future. Yes. That's crazy, though. So the president's involved. That's super unrealistic, though. The president himself would be so far removed from this kind of thing. Uh, this is administrative state stuff, right? This is like lower. Uh, this would be buried somewhere where someone who changes every four years doesn't oh, know right. about it, right? right? That's the president, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, what if you don't win the next election? Okay, well, I guess this whole project is scrapped then. It's like, no, th <laughs> this is kept in places where unless, the career unless people can keep control of it. Unless that president is put in place by Okay, eight people. years then. 
Oh, the FDR the next, ran for the more. Next oh, I see what you're saying. Is, I see. The, the, They're there's all a, there's a, an Illuminati thing. Well, that going is on uh, here. that is a theory. We'll learn about that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, yeah. Well, that's about all I got. Um, three snakes. That's crazy. And that's our nice. snake is the inferior one. Yep. Which is so obvious if you go back <laughs> and play the game again. <laughs> it's just funny to think about. Yeah. It's funny that there had to be an inferior one and that it turned out to be us and that it's yep. just so perfect. Yep. And it's very obvious. Well, All right, that's it for I Metal Gear Solid. We that, was will, a, that was a fun game. It was a, it. It's a fun game. I really like it a lot, yeah. despite my qualms with the ending. It's almost yeah. almost a perfect sort of like just fun action exactly, yeah. game, right? It's got a very interesting story, really good voice acting, really strong yeah. uh, storytelling. And the cinematics, and mm-hmm. yeah, just very well done. And uh, in my opinion, it gets better going on from here. Some people will say that's not true, and I understand their point of view, but I like mm. I like at least Metal Gear Solid 3 a lot better in this game. Cool. But that's for another time. Thanks for watching, fellas. <sighs> we will be engaged in the comments of this video to discuss more with you. Uh, it's looking like, at this point, Xenosaga is going to be our next game. Xenosaga All Episode right. 1. But we'll see if that changes. Um, but we're a couple weeks ahead, so we'll see where it goes. Yep. We'll see you next week. Peace out. <laughs>